Hello and welcome back to the Car Throttle Podcast, where Ethan, Jack and I read out your emails, act as your automotive agony uncles, and discuss unpopular opinions. Oh, every time. So yeah, it's good. good. Yeah. Does that hit you? That was hard? great singing. Thank I you very much. I didn't expect that. <laughs> uh, this week, we're joined by a man who's best known for sleeping upside down, as well as being Top Gear's not longer serving stick, but you did eight years. Uh, James Bond, stunt driver, racing driver, and author, Mr. Ben Collins. Thank great you very much for being here. How great are you to be doing? here, guys. Very, very well, thank you. Yeah. How are you feeling? You're feeling good? You're feeling pumped? I feel strong. Yeah. You feel you look strong. I don't know if I can take on three of you, but I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> well, it depends what kind of fight we're going to be doing. Yeah. If it's naked wrestling, then we're there. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Moving on. Move on. <laughs> anyway, Ben, uh, I said in the intro there that you are a published author. Yes. And you have a new book. So let me just quickly whip that out. Here it is. Aston Martin. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, it was a, this is yeah, this is the latest book. It's the history of Aston Martin over a hundred years of um, fast-paced history making, um, and I, I suppose I mean I love stories about people more than anything else. Um, so obviously a petrol head like you guys, but I didn't just want to write about cars. I was more interested in the, the, the I suppose the passion of the people that were behind them. So fortunately for me, because um, actually before going into this sort of research project, my only knowledge of the was of, of driving these things in the movies and getting hold of them on Top Gear and, and rinsing them basically. So in fact, I didn't really know a huge amount about the history other than watching Bond movies as a kid. So I really got to dive into the detail, um, went down into the, the archives at Aston and picked out all this um, fascinating research and went through this, this sort of a series of biographies really that are all interlinked in this kind of wonderful way. Um, so from Lionel Martin, who was the original founder sort of 1914 and the early days of, well, ba basically the first days of cars. So when all these pioneers were thinking, what do we do? We've done horses. And is it going to be have two wheelers, three wheelers, four, whatever, and you just basically a blank piece of paper. Um, these are the people that were inventing these machines. And he basically looked at everything that was on the market and went to France where you know, they were leading the technology and thought, okay, I can do this better. And I'm going to make this amazing light car that can travel across Europe and take you anywhere you want to go. And then he made an MX-5. And then he did. No. <laughs> I guess he made the the early day equivalent of the MX-5, but oh. um, blandly called the Coal Scuttle. So that's where it starts. Ah, yeah. um, and then it's just a succession of fascinating characters. So um, one of my favourites is this guy Count Louis Zabrowski, who was the the creator of Chitty Bang Bang. And the true story of that was the you know after World War One there was a, a knockdown sale on engines from German Zeppelins. So he took this huge monstrous engine, threw it into the into a truck chassis and made Chitty, which was this Leviathan machine. Um, Brooklands had just been built, this, this, the biggest racetrack in the world, you know, on British soil over at Surrey. And you could test these cars out and um, his, his machine went around at nearly 100 miles an hour. Nobody had ever seen or heard anything like it. The, the exhaust, I think, was 15 feet long. It was oh, made of a drain wow. pipe, you know. Oh, oh, amazing. Are you getting so, some ideas, Ethan, for your Z3? I'll get, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Starting to. <laughs> get some feelings. The ultimate modifier. Um, and I just love the, the links, the, the way this car was there. It was, it was racing at high speed. The banking was uneven and it took off on these bumps. Sailed past a 10-year-old boy and the boy was Ian Fleming. Oh, wow. um, Ian Fleming, who you know, went on into military intelligence, World War II, eventually wrote not just the James Bond books, but the story of Chitty Bang Bang, the flying car, all inspired by this count who helped fund Aston Martin in the early days and took them into Grand Prix racing. And it just... There's just the way these these stories keep interlinking. It's just fascinating. There's so many more as well. That's very cool. Don't give too much away. No. Um, ben, so the book is called Aston Martin, Made in Britain by Ben Collins. Um, can we give this one away? Yeah. I can see a massive box of books over there. So There's a box. This one we're going to give away. And Ben, would you sign it? Love to. Excellent. There's also a foreword in there thanking me <laughs> in this book. For well, what? For, for being... What not to do. <laughs> <laughs> it is one that you wrote yourself by hand. So I'm yeah. not sure that that counts, but, okay. but still. Let's, let's move it on. <laughs> I'm going to put the book down. There we go. Right, before we have a proper chat with Ben and read out your stories and things that grind your gears, what have we all been up to recently? Ben, what have you been up to recently? Well, besides writing this and a bit of homeschooling, um, I did actually, we, the filming has begun again, which is cool. So I've been back and forth to the US, um, doing a bit of filming out there with um, a few car companies and um, actually researching again because I'm going to start doing, a bit, well, more films for YouTube. Um, so I'm going to kick off a YouTube channel. Excellent. Um, What's that going to be called? It's going to be called Fast Food. I'm going to feed your addiction for speaking. Speaking of food as well, 
explain where we are, Ben. So we're in my brother-in-law's restaurants. This is Freddie Bird's place, little French. Um, we're in the middle of Bristol, near the, near the Downs. And um, he opened this a couple of years, I think it's a couple of years ago. And he's, just, he's had a great success with it. It gets fantastic reviews. We've been in here a few nights um, treating ourselves to this amazing place, which very sadly is closed at the moment yeah. until December the 2nd. But then there'll be, there'll be a massive list of people rushing to get back in here. It's always yeah. busy. Absolutely. Yeah. Check out Little French. We've not tasted the food or seen the food, but there is a kitchen there. They're doing takeouts. It smells good. Yeah. That's as much as I can say. The takeout boxes are pretty unreal. Oh, so that's what excellent. I'm doing. Spoil yourself. Yeah. So speaking <laughs> of fast food, what's going to be happening there? Well, we're going to kick off. Um, the first film is going to be focused on one car. It's going to be very simple. One bloke, one car, one track. Um, but eventually the idea is to get out and about, um, to go and sort of go to amazing places, drive the best machines and uh, just explore. Um, so there will be a kind of food element in some of these because um, I love food and I love cars. But primarily it's going to be about getting hold of the, the best machinery. But, you know, the, the whole point of a road trip is, you know, to get somewhere to a great location. And usually that means, you know, eating something yeah and um I, I was a big fan of bourdain's um show <clears throat> i thought that was wonderful travel show i loved his style i loved the people he met and that was obviously a food show but by the back door you're always traveling and um, i remember he, he did one i think it was um up in canada in a really remote area they went out onto the ice in these four by fours so that whole experience that whole vibe i thought was was amazing and you got um you know, there was a challenging tra you know transport element to it and you know through that you kind of think yeah what's the right how do i choose the best car the best way to evaluate that machinery is in the you know in the field going out into remote areas green lanes um race tracks roads or yes. all those yeah, places yeah, so yeah. it's um should be fun yeah, excellent good. so fast food coming to youtube very soon excited yeah. for that Ethan, what about you? What have you been up to? It says here that you've learned some new manoeuvres. Oh, Tell yeah. us about that. <laughs> I've, I've had a pretty exciting week. So this, I believe, will be released a few days after yeah. uh, a video we've just done. And uh, I, I, it, I don't really know how to explain this. <laughs> it's well, right the, in your mind, isn't the it? first yeah. thing you can do is thank me. Okay, yeah, thank you. Oh. Thank you, Alex. Uh, thank Daddy. you, thank you, Ben. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. Um, because it was my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, we spent the day at Kerbra with the GT86, uh, with Ben Collins teaching me some driving maneuvers, <laughs> which was interesting. So if you haven't watched the video, go and watch it. Then come back to this. Uh, but that was just—I say it in the video. It's just it was a once in a lifetime thing that I would not that I'd never. Th thought I would do because I, that's just not going to happen. Why would I do that? Why would me But do you guys are like the that? YouTube professionals and I'm I was amazed that you had never done this before. You guys have been out a long just, time. And just, how have you yeah. not gotten hold of a car before and, and driven it that way? I, I, I don't know, because my background isn't cars. And my, it's not my first interest. We've been too scared to let it happen, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've un unleashed the beast. <laughs> no, man, no manufacturer wanted it. <laughs> um, but uh what did, did, what did you learn? What was your favourite thing that you learned as well? Um, I really enjoyed the reverse J turn. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Let, let's insert um, a quick clip of that yeah. now. Now. First gear. Oh, he's done it. He's second. <laughs> yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> and the. But I, I, I forgive me because I was I, I was concentrating on so many things in that bit. And you, one thing you kept saying was whip your hand, whip your hand. And I was listening to it, but I kept thinking about my feet. Yeah. And then <laughs> whip, I was like, <laughs> whip your feet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, I just like what I was doing with my feet and stuff and turning around. That was all a nightmare. But then I sort of getting it. But then I was like, no, he said, whip your hand. So when I whipped my hand, lo and behold, it yep, worked. It went, so okay, yeah. yeah, when you listen, <laughs> <laughs> things work. When but, you listen um, to a guy who was training celebs for eight yeah, years on yeah, Top yeah. Gear, yeah, he kind of knows yeah. what he's talking about. Uh, and it might not have been the prettiest one, but it, it was one. It was very good because you stay pretty much inside your lane. That's the whole idea. If you make a perfect one, it's, it ro rotates on its own axis, yeah. which you, you pretty much were spot on with it. So you. I think you'd be pretty happy. Oh, I hope we, you enjoyed it as well. We can try it again on the way back on the M4. <laughs> Just stay in your lane, all right? <laughs> you don't cross over the gantry <laughs> into the other one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so very well done. Yeah, you had balls. And also there was one point where I think Ethan did, was it a drift or a handbrake turn or so? And Jack turned to me and he said, was that Ethan or was that Ben? Did you? I honestly said that. Did yeah. you? I was shocked, yeah. That's wow. a compliment. Bless him. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Ah. 
day made now. <laughs> there you go. You can go home now. Yeah. <laughs> go on, back off. <laughs> but there's a lot of unlearning to do, isn't there? That's the whole trick. Yeah. And like you say, with that, you're getting hands and feet confused mm. and um, there's a lot of picking apart stuff that you get ingrained with your daily routine. I think it's good to mix it up. Do you think more of that stuff, not these manoeuvres specifically, should be taught at driving lessons, but not in a dangerous way, but are there things that you can take from... It's a really interesting one. I mean, um, I've done so much time training people, military, celebs and stuff like that, and, um, and lunatics like yourself. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I still think that the more you know about driving, the better. Um, but then uh, I actually read quite a depressing sort of analysis, which was that if you teach people too much stuff and they know, you know, about how to slide a car around, they'd be encouraged to do that, start sliding around roundabouts and be more dangerous. So there's a kind of um, checks and balances thing. Mm. But I think if you, I still think the more you know, you can't say, oh yeah, well, let's limit what people understand about how cars work. I think the more you understand and if you understand the approach and how you're going to use that, then that makes you a safer driver. Um, so the drifting stuff we were doing, you know, as long as you don't try and re repeat that without me uh, <laughs> on the road, you're going to be fine. But, you know, when it's when you're in the snow or the ice and something happens, you now have uh, a control instinct yeah. that will that will keep you out of the ditch. You just have to whip it now. <laughs> don't whip, whip it. Whip your hand. <laughs> whip your hand around the steering wheel. <laughs> yeah, if you're the car park. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Uh, as for me, uh, remember last time I told you guys that I was picking up our new podcast van. So we're going to be mobile soon. I've done it. Oh, yeah, Mark, how is it? It's 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 a van. It's <laughs> yeah, a big, yeah. glorious van. And uh, Mar Martin, the guy from Houseless Not Homeless, has been living in that van for five years. It's a Renault Master, so it's an old Ooh. kind of school bus that he's converted into into a camper van, essentially. Um, now, when you live in a camper van, you don't really vacuum much. So there's a lot of deep cleaning that we need to do. Yeah, there's need dog to do. hair, human there's grime. Is there a loo? There, there could it's be. One there, big loo. there is one corner. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, uh, but it just needs. Yeah, it just needs a lot of love. But yesterday, I actually emptied my shed and put it in my mum's shed, and I used the van, and it was glorious. Oh, that's oh. good. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, it does need a bit of work. There's a false floor in there that we need to take out because okay. it's it's taking away a lot of headroom. Mm. And okay, there's uh, there's only one part in that van where I can stand up straight. Which means oh, wow. that you guys won't yeah, be able to well, stand up straight anyway. We'll have to lay down to get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the plan, Ben, is to turn that into a podcast van. Yeah. And then maybe we'll invite you back and we'll have like nice leather sofas in there. Mega. <gasps> you could teach us to drift in the van. In whilst, the van. whilst you're podding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sounds yes. good. Is that a verb to pod? To yeah. Pod it is now. Yeah. Okay. Right there now. we go. Yeah. Right. Ben Collins says it is. Yeah. I'm going to pod you. Oh. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, that's a verb. That's okay, you would put okay. it. How I, thought would... we, I thought we said the wrestling was out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we move on from podding? <laughs> yeah. Actually, Urban Dictionary podding, what does that say? <laughs> I bet there's something grimy in there. Uh, anyway, Jack, what have you been up to? Uh, I actually took my E39 down to Munich Legends. <gasps> oh, oh, yes, yeah, I, I meant to ask you this yeah, yeah. Last, last week. Uh, firstly, a uh, big shout out to Munich Legends. They're great guys down there. If you've, uh, if you've got a BMW and you need something done, I'd suggest taking to the, those guys. Yeah, well, they don't know it isn't worth knowing. Yeah, they're excellent. But um, it's funny, so I James inspected the car again. Yes, James. And um, after he was done with it, he said, when I first saw it, I was a bit worried because obviously it's got a cracked bumper and like the headlights are a bit gone and stuff like that. But he said it's actually pretty good. Whoa. No, pretty good. Really? Yeah, I'm You've shot. done it. I've done it. Well I've done. managed it somehow. Uh, so I'm over the mood about that. There's a couple of things which are a bit strange about it. I know that one side uh, has a really bad seal repair, and I said to him, "Oh yeah, like excuse that bad seal repair." And he went, "Oh yeah," and the other side. I went, oh, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> what? He was like, yeah, come look at this. And uh, went around the other side and it, it's a lot better than the other one, but the other side's been repaired as well. But it, it, it's good enough that I didn't notice it, oh, but wow. he did being a... Uh, yeah. So it tagged it. both armcos, both sides of the track at the number. Yeah, yeah, it did, yeah, <laughs> yeah. By the looks of it. Yeah, the underside of it, all the uh, under trays and everything's taken uh, a bit of a battering. So I think it's gone up a really high curb at some point oh, in his man. life, yeah. Or a hard landing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. probably more likely. But I'm really happy, yeah. And excellent. Yeah. And I drove, drove it here and it was it was excellent. Fantastic. So what needs repairing imminently? Um, there are some, I think some bushes on the front su suspension, which is to be expected because it's done a few miles now. But um, what are bushes? Oh, we see you talking about them. I actually know what they are. You called him out on that. Yeah. That's, you've called him out. Oh, what is a bush? Do then? you know that? They're the, they're the bits in between the metal bits. There you go. <laughs> Alex, any more on that? Well, I mean, pretty much like if you've got a wishbone, then, you know, the yeah. triangular thing. Yeah. You've got essentially rubber cups that sit inside yeah. the kind of metal housings 
And that essentially just means it's it's like a big damper. Essentially, oh, it's the it rubber. Out. It's the rubber. Oh, I, I like to, it's right. like okay, the, yeah. the cartilage between your like your your joints. I guess. Oh, that's there you go. I like that. Yeah, take that. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, that's why. Not I mean. not too expensive then to repair. Uh, no, I think he's just it just replaced two front arms because Bish has gone on both sides okay, and they nice. come with. So yeah, not, not too bad. Uh, and yeah. uh, 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 maybe uh, not for a car like that. Nah, nah. There's a couple of other bits that need sorting out, but it's all right. It's okay. I'm happy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well done. You haven't bought a shitter. No. So it wasn't an eleven and a half thousand pound repair bill like mine. No, no, not quite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Very good. Ouch. Uh, what's that noise? Oh yeah, we they they are working in the yeah. restaurant. Oh right, I uh, thought it I thought it was like static in the. Uh, I think they might be frying. Something. I think they're frying something. Anyway, we'll move they on. They fired like up the rain. engines. The ignition. They is have. On. Yeah. So you might hear some. Clattering. Some cooking noises. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe some music soon. Maybe WAP will come on. Maybe I was listening to WAP on the way you up. Of course you are. Too, right? Engine, WAP, WAP, WAP. For the wet ass. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> um, in, in, that's your car outside, isn't it? It is. Do you that, like it? Is that a Mazda? That is a Mazda. Oh. Is, that the, is that the original Mazda logo on the front? Yes. And does the passenger need to wear a racing harness when you're driving? Uh, Recommend. Well, well, there are harnesses there, so yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll check that out later. Oh, really? Oh. I think, well, you know. We're in the town, just take a little spin. I, I don't know if you're taking the piss out of me or, or if you're actually genuinely interested. It's, got, it's got a V6. Who put that in? Uh, I put it in with my friend. Okay, okay. Mostly gas. That's a lot of power. Yeah. Wait, yeah. What V6 engine is that? Uh, it's a Jaguar AJ30 V6. I Jeez. thought it was a Porsche uh, okay. engine. <laughs> Wait, which, <laughs> yeah, there we go. I mean, there we go. So Porsche originally started developing a V6. They decided they didn't want it. And then Ford um, bought all the rights off it. And yeah. then they turned that into the AJ30 V6. So my Mazda is essentially a Porsche. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 250 horsepower, you know, weighs a ton. It's, it looks great. How much have you spent on that? Anyway, so Ben, whenever we so have- So I'm thinking BMW Z3. What about Z3, what? Well, I just want to work out, I'm just intrigued. I'm just intrigued how much you'd spent on your Mazda yeah. and then what you could have bought with a Z3, similar package. Okay, uh, I, um, I could have bought a Z3M. Okay, yeah. Happy? Uh, uh, Are you happy, Ben? Yes or no? I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm Next. sorry, I'm sorry. But we'll take it out later. Uh, are you happy? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> uh, right, Ben, whenever we have a celeb on, and because you've seen and done a lot, what's that one story that you have that always makes you think, what the, what the f has happened? Um, well, there were a lot of pinch yourself moments with, with the, the Top Gear mob. Um, I guess one of my favorites and the weirdest sort of surreal moments um, as we were out in the in the desert, way way out, I think it's yeah, in California, um, up near. I hope I got that right because it's Ed Edwards Air Force Base. We were out there, and um, they were, oh right, we're going to get this really cool shot. And I never really used to know really what was going on much. So we want to get the Mirage shot, like the Chuck Yeager walking back from the crash airplane in the right stuff. I said, like, okay, that sounds great. So we're going to take you out to the desert, and you're going to dress up in your Stig outfit and just walk towards the camera. Like, okay, I, I got this. I got this covered. Um, so we went out and then um, we had an American handler trying to, trying to sort of chaparral the shoot and we'd done everything we're not supposed to do. We'd flown over Honda's secret R&D place in a helicopter, which you weren't supposed to do. And it were, it were people trying to, I don't know what they're trying to do for the ground, send up, <laughs> send up a missile or something. Um, and uh, we were being just sort of chased out of one place after another. Um, so I was beginning to think, you know, and this, this poor man, his blood pressure was going through the roof. He's saying, you can't go out there, you can't do this. I said, well, what's the problem? It's just a bit of desert. And he said, no, you, you cannot stop. You cannot stop on these roads. They're monitored. And you think, well, you've driven, we've driven for like a hundred miles. Yeah. There's no cars and there's blue sky. I mean, there's nothing up, down, around. It's just desert everywhere. Um, anyway, so we, we pulled over and uh, I hopped out, went out onto the dried lake about, you know, 200 yards or so. The guy's got the cameras out and um, just walked towards the camera. I did this one time and then reset out back to my little position. And it seemed to be working with getting what they wanted. Anyway, within the time that we'd stopped, which could have been no more than sort of four minutes, um, these three massive Suburbans, like out of 24, you know, yeah. tinted windows, they heaved in, pulled up quite sharply, doors flung open and d dudes in camouflage with M4 assault rifles. Oh, no. The big Ray-Bans sort of wow. um, commando berets sort of um, business came out looking quite serious. I was like, oh. And there's you in your stick helmet. There's me <laughs> dressed like a Korean fighter pilot. Um, <laughs> and they kept looking and Top Gear wasn't really, was not on the screens then in America. I think it was being heavily downloaded online and everything, but 
people didn't really know what it was. They just so you could see these glances like the Korean, who's the Korean fighter pilot guy? Who who is this? And I just I just quietly moseyed off, just quietly sat down, just thinking, stay still. <laughs> Don't, no fast movements. The the poor handler was left to handle the situation. Explain it was just a film crew, and this guy's not you know he's not landed in a UFO or anything like that. And, um, and, and it was a, I thought a miracle we weren't arrested. Yeah, but we wow. weren't. We were sort of left alone, and they, they you know the guys the Ray Bans stopped looking at us. And so you we, didn't have the right permissions that you needed. We had no oh no no permissions, <laughs> but that was quite regular. And we used to go around in this sort of the film bubble, and generally speaking, law enforcement would approach, engage enjoy what we were doing and, and off you go. Like the, the class that we filmed that, the, one of the best runs I ever did was the Bugatti run across Europe. So the boys did that race where they went to get the truffle. Yeah, and yeah. Jeremy drove from, was it Turin, I think, back to London. Hammond and May flew. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they did that brilliant race. And to capture the shots, <clears throat> I picked up the car in London and we and shot back, you know, with the, with the camera teams to get all the footage or extra footage, basically. Um, which did involve exceeding the speed limit ex ex excessively. And, How uh, excessive were we talking? Well, I mean, in the area, so we, this is the beautiful thing because they were, we were always working with the police. Um, it was in controlled areas and we were able to, you know, tap it out basically. Wow. Which was pretty awesome. So we had the, the Italian police being the most friendly and cooperative. They just absolutely loved it. So we'd have these guys, we'd have kind of like forerunners in front of us. Um, getting these high speed shots and blasting past the cameras. I mean, it was a pretty amazing. It was the best three days of the best. Anyway, so oh, I've digressed so from cool. the original story, but both of them, you know, you get, it's just this bizarre thing because you, you're able to, you're able to do stuff that you, of course you can't do just Joe public. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with, you know, filming these movies. It's, it's great. Although in those ones, we'll tend to block off the streets completely shut down by the police. Whereas with Top Gear, it was always sort of rolling road closure or, um, you know, just with, or with a close scrutiny of, you know, watching what we were doing. Just carte blanche wherever you went. Not quite, Oh, but felt like it at times, yeah. Did, did Jeremy have to give you his clothes when he jumped out? Fortunately not. I mean, it wouldn't have really fit very well. Um, he's six foot five or whatever he is. Um, yeah, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I just hid. The guys were very clever with um, tuning me out in the, in the cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, right, we're now going to move it on to a Ben Collins Q&A. So I asked you guys on Instagram to send me your burning Collins questions and I have got I don't know about 12 questions here so let's get straight into it it's a good one from Parsa and he says how did you get the stick job at Top Gear was there an audition there was an audition um and uh, I'd seen the show on telly you know kind of grew up with Top Gear been on television since the 70s I'm vaguely aware of Noel Edmonds doing something um and uh you know, I was an aspiring racing driver. I was, I was trying to get to um, to race at Le Mans and, and other things like that. So I thought, well, this could be great. You know, and potentially with through the through the TV route, there could be an act. You know, it's going to help with the racing racing side of things too. Plus, they had this um, you know pole shot for speed. It was quite clear. And it looked great. And the, you know, so yeah, I sent in an application saying, this is what I do. Is there you know anything I could do usefully? And there was no response to that. So um, I, can, I persisted with the writing of the Excellent. letters yeah. and um, approached some friends I had at the, mag at the top of your magazine. You should speak to so-and-so and, -so and the, li the list of people you should speak to just kept seemed to grow. I later found out that they would, um, they had a pile of CVs for different roles and um, occasionally the boss was forced to sit down and, and look at these. And he's like, okay, and just took the first half and binned those. It's like, <laughs> oh, wow. I don't like the unlucky ones. Yeah. So that's that lot done. And then he reviewed was this, the rest. Was this Andy Wilman at the time? Might be, yeah. Might be. Okay. Might be. Might have been him or one of a deputy, uh, whether that's true or not. And then uh, anyway, they did get back in touch and I got um, sort of some directions. They got a standard sort of spreadsheet of how to get to Dunsfold track, having no idea what I was going to do. And um, I rocked up and met this man, this um, gray haired guy who didn't have a belt and had a big file of papers. And he looked like a complete mess. This was Andy Wilman, the um, <laughs> executive producer. I didn't really know what he was about or anything. And he had the keys to a Ford Focus and the track. And he obviously knew what time it could do um, in other hands and everything. So anyway, I, I ripped around. I think I did about, well, he showed me the lap first, which was really funny. He spoke quite slowly and very ser very seriously about the track. And, um, and then he got out. I got in the seat and then he just produced a stopwatch and just gurned at me from the side. Really? And then he was like, okay, oh, no pressure. Just, game on. And I said, do I circulate? He said, no, standing start. It's got to be standing start. Okay, that's, that's not what I'm used to. So anyway, off I went. 
I did three or four laps. And I said that they said, "Is that is that all you can do?" And I said, "Yeah, that's, that's it. That's I think that's as fast as I can. I can't get any quicker than that." Okay. He didn't look very impressed. He didn't tell me what times I'd done. Uh, oh, well, that was that then. So off I off I went. I had nothing more for at least two months, and then um, I got a phone call saying, "Can you come back to the track next week?" And that was it. That was me being hired. Oh, wow. But it was all so yeah. typically. Oh well, you know, less safer. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But that was day one, and there was a racing suit there that didn't fit very well. <laughs> so I climbed into this thing. I, I used to refer to it as the tea bag. It was a sort of off-white suit. I don't know who it was measured for, but it wasn't <laughs> measured for me anyway. The original sort of bandit white helmet. And I can't even remember what we drove on the first day, but it was just an amazing experience because I'd never really worked with film crews. And they, these guys were all there. They knew what they were doing. Um, but from day one, I took it mega serious. And I, I turned up with a, with a black balaclava with just the eye holes, which is a bit ominous for the crew. Um, and just was very, very careful, cagey, um, not to just, yeah, just I just kept, absolutely kept to myself. Oh, wow, that's amazing. But I realized there's so much to learn because you've got guys, they were, they'd be standing right next to the car or down on the ground with a camera mm. where you're gonna drive past and thinking, is that safe and da, 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 da. So you have to start interacting to understand what they're gonna do next. So speaking was allowed, um, but, but obviously nothing more than that. And the helmet just stayed on the whole day. Bloody hell. Yeah. How, how many people knew that you were the sick? Just my boss. And one really? other, it was Jim Wiseman, who's one of the early sort of um, production team people. He was there from the very beginning, just the two guys. So in fact, I, I think I've been there about a year before, and still the presenters didn't know who it was. Wow. Um, <laughs> until we started doing the live shows. So we, they, they had a live stunt show called the MPH show at the time, which I became that. Top yeah. Gear Live. And the NEC, wasn't it? That's it, yeah. yeah. Um, and I had to do a race against Tiff Nadell, which was really a, a, a big moment because Again, watch Tiff on TV. Yeah, and he's an amazing driver. And we had to drift a figure of eight around this um, piece of arena, basically, which was pitch black. They had lights all shining everywhere in the wrong direction. And I had a black visor on. Oh, God. And I couldn't see the edges. And, and the edges are all curtains, and it's curtains with concrete. So it's, that was quite a thing. Yeah. So I was there to do that. And I was loitering in the motorhome, hiding, basically. And um, Clarkson walked in and sort of gave me the looks like, who the hell are you? I was like, who the hell are you? <laughs> so I, I know who you are. Um, so Andy said, I, Andy said, I should sit here. Um, right. I still didn't think I'm not telling you who I am because Andy's told me not to. Yeah. And then he reappeared and obviously Wilman had told him, that's Ben, he's the stig. Amazing. Keep a lid on it. Yeah, and um, yeah. so that was that. And that brings me nicely onto my next question from Remus. And he says, how difficult was it to keep your identity as Stig a secret for all of those years? Well, I would say in the beginning, it was very easy because I just didn't tell anybody. And um, so only two people knowing, that's pretty tight. Um, but after the first year, you know, I was mentioning, you know, Jeremy was told, presenters found out and, uh, and those kind of things. <clears throat> and it's just, it was bureaucratic crap that kind of began to infiltrate because you have to start signing forms. And there are some forms you just can't sign as the stig. So, you know, a few manufacturers would know, <clears throat> you get people coming and leaving the show. So you get, you end up on, well, actually also I was being deployed more than just as the stig. So I started doing um, some of the driving shots that were being used to cut into the films with the presenters or, you know, some of the background stuff. So I was doing work that where I couldn't wear a helmet. Yeah. Um, so, it then went around the office a bit more that we've got, oh, Ben's pro, our pro will bring him in to do X, Y, and Z. So there's like a creep. So they began, more people began to find out, but still, you know, we did manage to keep it under wraps. So, I mean, the short answer is it, it initially very, very straightforward. And then it became, it was like a snowball yeah, effect yeah. and it got gradually harder. Um, but the funny part was that at the very beginning, it was before YouTube, so we're talking ancient times. Um, no Wikipedia, all of this, and camera phones, stuff like that. And one of the dumb things we did, and I knew it was wrong when I did it, even though I hadn't been on t TV um, hardly at all before, was they had a Dutch um, TV show came across. And I think they quite fancied the presenter. So they, they said, yeah, you can interview, you can interview the Stig. So he's over there. And I said, and the producer said, I said, are you sure I should be talking on camera? Yeah. Because um, people they said, oh, no, it's just Dutch television. No one's going to see it. So I did the interview, felt bad about doing it. And I really made these really bad cagey sort of answers. And of course, lo and behold, a few years later, it popped up on YouTube and people yeah. said, I recognize that voice. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's not Ben and da da da. So then Wikipedia was out and it began to sort of hint at it and it was guessing Damon Hill, which was fine. So we kept promoting that, or the Royal we, we you know, the production team <laughs> kept misleading people on Wikipedia. And then someone started updating it saying, oh, but it might be Ben Collins. They, they would delete that because you could, you could keep editing. 
Um, and then there was some flash photography that was done. I got zapped in, I think, London. These are really one of those big high density camera um, flashes. And it went through the visor and you could see the top half. Yeah. Um, but at that point I had let my girlfriend, now lovely wife, know the, what I was doing. Cause it was- Oh, so she didn't know? She didn't know at first. Bloody no. hell. Wow. But you know, you've got- <laughs> If you keep that secret, Ben, what other secrets are <laughs> I keeping from you? <laughs> she tells me I'm a good liar, but I know <laughs> only about that. Um, but yeah, you've got this suit and kit. I know like you keep disappearing for days at a time. What are you doing? <laughs> Okay, I've got a, I've got a job. Yeah. Um. So uh, there was, yeah. And she said, "Oh, look, it's it's Damon Hill. That's, it's, that's not Damon Hill. That's me." She said, "Oh, it looks like Damon Hill. I said, oh, even you." Bloody. Hell. Um. So it was quite good. It was, but in the end, it got got more and more difficult yeah. because it did sort of it did get out there a bit more, and uh, there was a couple of little miniature, you know, people, a couple of of the outlets toyed with releasing who it was. They sort of knew in the end, um, about six or seven years in, it began to get you know more of an open secret. And then the Radio Times did a kind of reveal. They, I had no idea this was coming and they did a, um, a front page cover shot of the, someone dressed in the stick suit. So BBC's own you know, TV guide. And I didn't see it. The first I saw it, we were having some building work done and the builder slapped the Radio Times down on the desk, on the table yeah. and said, oh, could you sign that? And I said, oh, that's not me. Um, I know I'm a racing driver, but Bloody you know, and I was used to fobbing people off. He said, "Oh no, no, you were inside." Oh and, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So I opened it, and my heart just sank, and it was this really strange feeling. It's a kind of sinking feeling, but I'd known it was going to come one day. Been there eight years, absolutely amazing, absolutely loved it. But there was a, I just felt it was also a weight was kind of lifted. I just it was it was both at the same time. I thought this is the beginning of the end because it's it's there in print. Yeah. And um, after that, the main titles also ran with the story, and that was. You know, yeah, the writing was on the wall that this is now the game over because the whole essence of the Stig was yeah. secrecy and nobody knowing. Um, it was like Darth Vader, you know, until the <laughs> lid came. Once the, but once yeah, yeah. the masks were unveiled, un un unveiled, uh, it's kind of you're on a slippery slope. So, so what happened in the days following that kind of reveal when that magazine was put down on your table? What what happened? Well, it was a bit of an own goal. I mean, and. I suppose there was, a, I don't know, I just felt a perception change. You know, everyone I work with have got with extremely well, but there are commercial interests at, at play as well. And um, I just felt the temperature in the room was a bit different. And uh, particularly when it, when it ran out in the, in the um, sort of like um, the dailies, uh, I started to think this has got a shelf life and I should, yeah. and, and there was a bit of chat, oh, maybe we should get other people in to do your, your job as well. It's like, okay, that sounds like we're getting ready to say goodbye. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I thought, right, I, I'm going to, make a plan and um, leave at the end of the next series. And that's what I did. I get my notice in. Um, I was lucky to get the last series because it was an amazing one. I mean, I got to drive the Bugatti Supersport, which was incredible. That's why I set the, my fastest time around the track in the Bugatti Supersport, which was just incredible. I've, I've driven the same car. Have you? I have actually, yeah. It's, on the, it's on amazing. The autobahn. Yeah. But it's that much better than the original because it's got enough power, 1200 horsepower, <laughs> to overwhelm the rear axle. So you can, you could just, Kick, you could just I, kick it into a drift through a corner. I didn't do that. No. No, I drove it in a straight line. <laughs> what was amazing is that we emptied the fuel tank in fuel, four laps. Four laps? Yeah, I, 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 and I, I still don't quite understand the physics. Because there's a, one of my favorite stats is that the, uh, the Bugatti, the tires on a Bugatti are rated to do 250 miles an hour for 15 minutes, but you run out of fuel in 12. <laughs> so that's, but that's top speed, 250 yeah, miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah. But the, the lap, we never got, you know, we would, I think it was doing just under 170 on the back straight, something like that. Bloody hell. Jeez. Um, it was an, it was amazing. It, it, when you, under braking at the first corner, it, you don't, re, you don't realize it to come around for the second lap, but it was like someone rubbed a black, two black crayons for the whole length of the braking area. Wow. And the ABS was chattering. So you could see the, the stutters in the, in the markers, but there were these two fat black lines. Oh, that's great because I'm going to get good traction off those. Um, although it's doing terrible things to tires, and we used um, I think at least two sets, and the set and the set of tires is about oh, 18 grand. Oh, so we had a, oh, a couple of sets of those um, that we hadn't used previously because the previous car, <clears throat> originally Bugatti were nervous, they didn't want to give us the car. So the first Veyron, they didn't give it to us, and they, the boys, and girls in the office borrowed someone's Veyron as a private car. Um, and he was really worried about the tires. And then I, I realized why, because he'd seen me drive and thought, this animal is gonna tear them up. So anyway, we're leaving these black marks everywhere. And, um, but yeah, it was it was brilliant because it had just enough power to free it up on the way out of the corner. And Crazy. it's a big, heavy car. Yeah. It didn't want to rotate. So you get a lot of understeer when you're, you're really trying to push it. 
it just got it to feather through the corner. And uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, it produced some ripping times. And, uh, Amazing. That was really cool. It was back in the days when money wasn't a thing for you guys. Was no. It? But yes, four laps, empty tank. So that's... It's just amazing how much, and it's just because it's just producing so much energy and yeah. so much friction in the rubber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what is that? It's a W16. W16, yeah. yeah. It's just nuts, that motor. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, <laughs> Varun asks, who out of the former three presenters was the best driver? Good question. It was a, it's a bit of a tough one. I mean, really, how do you analyze that? Because uh, I don't think, I think Jeremy was the only one that did a lap time in the reasonably priced car. And really they should have all been subjected to that challenge. And then we could sort of know. Um, actually the, the best assessment we did was for the, we did a 24 hour race, the brick car, 24 yes, hours. Yes, I wanted to bring that up as well, yeah. Yeah, in the diesel BM, people loved that. I, I loved it, it was hilarious. It, it was foggy. Um, so I was amazed the race kept going. Um, as soon as the fog came on, I remember Jeremy saying, we should put James in. My speed is wasted in this <laughs> position. So James May sort of put the helmet on and I don't know how long he did, but it wasn't very long. So I can't see anything. And we were losing lots of time because he was, he was being quite cautious, understandably, because yeah. he was literally pea soup. It's like, put Ben in. So I got in and I did a lot of the race all through the night and I had a great, wonderful time because I just loved driving in mad conditions. And um, I also realized there was a lot of people who were, who'd like packed it in, just weren't, um, taking many risks we were in this our car was not quick it was a, a diesel bm it had a wing on it which i said just added weight yeah, we yeah. Just <laughs> take it off and one of the one of the guys like no it, it definitely makes a difference i said it doesn't make any difference it makes no difference but it, if you like it okay they'd say well we spent 800 quid on this wing oh, <laughs> bloody hell. Okay. we spent 800 quid yeah. on a car yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the wing stayed on anyway we rattled around and um, that enabled us to catch up quite a lot of time i think i unlapped us a few times and amazing Cool. Got us back into some sort of credible position, but we, we ended up on the podium. Anyway, I haven't answered the question. Um, I suppose, I mean, all, they've all got their um, strengths and weaknesses. James's major strength is that he's, he can listen. Jeremy has, un, is unable to do so. <laughs> <laughs> so he did this amazing film with Jackie Stewart, Alton Park. And Alton Park, I think, is probably the best circuit in the UK, one of the best in the world. An incredible place and um, so much driver. Um, input yeah. to your lap time and stuff. And uh, Jackie's just the maestro. So, I mean, that that's well worth re-watching. That episode is, is brilliant. So James really absorbed that and was producing good lap times. But he's quite cautious, you know, and that was his methodical approach paid off. Hammond's pretty wild. I mean, it's like, there's a jet car. Do you want to drive it? Yes, he gets yeah. in there. I mean. He's got history, doesn't he? So he'll give it a go. He'll give it a poke. And um, and Jeremy actually, for all his faults as a, as a student, um, <laughs> You know, he has got some gusto and he can slide it quite well. So oh, he mate. can do Can he slide it as well as Ethan? No one can. No. He can he can drift. <laughs> can now, he? now you've just you've just cracked the seal yeah. on your yeah. on your driving yeah. ability. Give me time. Give a bit more time, a bit yeah. more experience. I mean Kerbera is quite a rough I mean yeah, we had Dunsfold, yeah. so there's nothing to hit at Dunsfold except yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the 747 <laughs> <laughs> skid far enough away. Whereas you you had some significant infrastructure. Yeah, I was hampered. You could have damaged. <laughs> yeah. I held you back. I yeah, you back. <laughs> you'll get there. You'll get there. Amazing, um, Ethan. You've got a question here. Do you want to read that one up? Oh yeah, yeah. I was quite um, keen to know uh, whether out of the celebs you took out, were there any sort of divas or people that you were like sitting there going, oh. God, this is cringing. I no, not really. I mean, what, what um, interestingly, because everybody's different, completely different. So you've got your the fear gauge from raging. I'm totally terrified. That which manifests itself in many ways. To I'm massively overconfident. Think Ranoff finds, and I mean that in the <laughs> nicest possible way. By, by overconfident, I mean abs no fear and yeah, absence yeah. Of, of fear. Um, and so with him. You know, I, he took when I'd given him the basic rudimentary. You know, this is the gear lever and where the track goes. He set off, and it was clear to me that he didn't realise I was just, I was still in the car, or if I was, I was just ballast. He was just going. He was off. It was a thousand yard stare. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, rinse this thing and or break it. You know, I could see. So I was trying to speak to him, and he absolutely un, it was unresponsive. So I, I punched him in the helmet, and I'd read his books. I'd read um, one of my favourites. He wrote Living Dangerously. Is that right? Is that his one? I think it is his. I was getting confused up with another general. But yes, no, that's um, his, one of his. It's brilliant. It's, a, it's an amazing read. And what, he, what you gain from it is that he's just, yeah, there's no sense of personal safety involved with his um, MO. He just goes for it. He, he's just bloody minded. And I thought, well, whilst I'm in the car, 
I, I'm not, you know, I'm having that. I want, there's got to be, otherwise I'll just get out mm -hmm. if he wants to do that. So he slowed down for a bit. I said, okay, let's, let's, let's consider the technique we're going to use here. And, oh, yeah, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, okay, so I showed him around got, and sort of taught him a bit of, because it's nothing like anything he's done before. So I gave him, you know, what we did, mm -hmm. you know, breaking in a straight line and how the steering technique works and all that stuff. And I got out as quickly as I could. And then he just grabbed it by the scruff of the neck and um, hammered it. Um, so he was, you know, ballsy. He produced a lap time. The car was sort of smoking wreck at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Covered in mud. He'd been off everywhere. Um, and then other people would be more, you know, more cautious. And it's always hard to know um, what they're thinking. One of the funniest, I'm not sure it was funny for him, was David Williams. So he came round. And comedians, you never could quite judge because it, it was so, you know, you watch them, tell, they're hilarious. And then in real life, they're not always cracking jokes and stuff. And he seemed quite serious. And then I, I thought, maybe he's a bit nervous, actually. So I was trying to be, you know, to, um, cheer him on and give him, give him the, as much support as I could. Anyway, um, we were standing on the side of the track. And stupidly, we would occasionally put our, you know, camera quite close to the end to get that across, the, okay, across the yeah. line. Mm -hmm. So I was standing there with, with Wiseman, the Jim, who are one of the early, early guys, and the cameraman and the camera, and we're looking at this, I'm standing there on the side with the suit on and everything. And the last two corners were the, really the most challenging. And it's quite hard because they've done, everything else has been joined up really well. You could sort of see, you can see pretty quite well how oh, it's break late there, it's good to be a good lap. And you can just throw it all away in the last two. So the penultimate corner, you come in, you steam in, as, it's so late on the brakes, with, and you, you're practically running out of steering, the front tire is just giving up and, you, and it screeches in. And you can fling it off onto the mud there. And if you get that right, there's one more corner, but usually something dramatic has just happened to you. And if you're not used to that type of driving, you, you, it's, all, it's a massive panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last corner, you get, again, the front tires are screaming and it, you, know, you can go straight on. And this is what was happening with Williams. So he'd had a bit of a wibbly wobbly and he was taking the, <laughs> he, he turned into the last corner and I noticed that he continued to steer left. Yeah. And the, the more he was steering left, the more it was going straight on. And then tragically, I think he wanted to press the brake pedal. He told his foot to move from the accelerator to the brake and push the brake. And his foot thought it was pushing the brake pedal, but it was still mashing the accelerator. Oh, oh God. And I could see the, the big eyes and um, I realized, <laughs> and I was, I was tracks on and I was trying to suggest, I was trying to say, get off the power, lift off and whilst jogging backwards. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, then it was kind of like, and we just grabbed the cameraman and just pulled him away because he basically speared straight off, Bloody straight hell. past where we were standing. We jumped, we jumped onto the fence which had no gate. We put a gate after this incident. We put a gate <laughs> yeah, nice. And we kept the right, right, keep the gate open. Uh, and everything was fine. But he then, yeah, he spiraled across cool. onto the grass and he, and that was, uh, that was him done. So not the, the most naturally talented of celebs. I don't know. I would say again, he, he was very determined, um, but um, it was actually, there's a lot of pressure because there's a whole list of names. Mm. You know, the early days, there's like 10 people who've done it before and you're, you're, one of the early pioneers in a way, when there's 50 names on there, yeah. you don't want to leave. Oh, well, yeah, how'd it go? Yeah, that was 48th. Um, so, yeah. oh, so yeah, that, would to suck. Get. that would really suck. So I think the, I think the bit of pressure crept in and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. people would um, really go for it. And I can't, you know, can't fault someone for trying, so. How far off um, were they off your time in that car? Dangerously close in the end. Um, I remember it, it was, uh, I think the top times were, I say dangerously close. Because in that type of car, there's, there's less I can bring to the party, you know. Bring a Formula One car and big downforce and it, it's less accessible to people. So the margin will, will only grow the more complicated the car gets. But I think they're about two and a half, three seconds away. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what we could, you know, do in that. But it was pretty tight grouping though with the yeah, F1. Yeah. And what about you versus Lewis Hamilton? I beat him. Did you still beat him? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah. Sorry, Lewis. <laughs> he did go quicker after I left. But I sprinkled a bit of oil, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice, nice. I didn't actually. He he set in a really amazing time because I remember looking at the track and there was a bit of damp patches on the, you know. But it was a mis the Suzuki Liana was a mystery. It used to get really. Oh, oh! They're coming for you. Uh oh! <laughs> Run! They're looking for a, a Mazda. <laughs> um, yeah, he. Um, the track was track was damp on the straights, but because the Liana used to the, the tires used to overheat. Okay, okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, I think it actually may have helped a little bit cool the tires. So, because with, ah. with Mansell, we went through two cars actually. So, um, the first one, it was certainly not right with it. We switched cars out, and that's when he produced his best time. Oh, okay. Because it had cooler tires. 
Um, so you really have to be careful not to overdrive it. It was a strange little car. But anyway, um, when I left, I was still quickest just. Yeah. But then um, Baricello turned up. Yeah. You yeah. know, cheated. Yeah. Must have, must have <laughs> cheated. Um, not well, bitter, right? No, not bitter. The track had got bigger, obviously. They, actually, I would like to go back and have another go because the, the bit we used to run off a lot at Gambon, so I am, you know, no racing driver goes down without a fight. Then they, they expanded the, the the concrete there to make make good the track. So I did. I think it did pick up about three or four tenths in in Ooh. speed you could carry through that section. So was he three or four tenths quicker than you? Just under. Just uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> rematch. 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 <laughs> so in the back pocket. The stress. The stress. The stress. So I mean, everybody that go in, you see these F1 guys, and I mean, oh, I remember Jensen Button going, stressful. I was like, no, it's not an F1 session, but everybody wants to do well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See there, in this pathetic car, and you can't. They can't. You can't use, uh, yeah, it's, there's nothing ballsy. I mean, it, it really yeah. does separate the men from the boys, though, because you've all got the same level playing field. I was wondering, though, did the car always have the same amount of fuel? Was it always on brand new tyres? No. No, okay. It was a, it was terrible. It's, it used to come out and you go, oh, it's got the same mud on it as it had last <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Like, come on. Yeah. It had a real, you know, and was it Trevor Eve? I mean, he literally drove the wheels off it. One of the wheels <laughs> fell yeah, off. The wheel fell off. I thought, well, at least now we'll get a fresh tyre. Oh, wow. <laughs> so... It was no, it was completely ragged, and I think I wasn't there for it. But uh, it was Vettel was after my time, and um, but apparently he turned up with a with a uh, pressure gauge. I thought smart man. Yeah, yeah. He can say he knows so that German. We're, we're, <laughs> we're so amateur. He turned up, yeah, yes, and he's like. Shh, shh, shh. Apparently checked the tire pressures and people are like, Ooh. <laughs> no one's thought of this before. And uh, yeah, he brought a bit of um, preparation to it. But yeah, no, yeah. I mean, well, we used to fill it with gas and that was it. Yeah, fair. Excellent. Did these celebrities know who you were? Did you have your helmet on oh, for, when you were question. teaching them? It was on the whole time. Uh, so no, um, I, I, you know, used to get a bit misty. So I, I cracked the old visor and occasionally you thought they need, these guys need a bit of eye contact, but but um, no, never, never had the helmet off. But you just chat normally with them and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I should shout um, uh, shout meaningfully from the passenger seats and hope that it made sense. Yeah, okay. I mean, you've experienced this first time. I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, the, yeah, uh, and the only one I obviously could take the helmet off for, and I just wore civvies, we had um, this amazing man, Billy Baxter, um, uh, who was completely blind and oh, had yeah, um, wanted to... Um, basically beat the slowest time, which I think was Terry Wogan's time, two minutes and four seconds. Um, and that was his challenge, he'd set himself. And he was just brilliant. He was absolutely a great guy, he's ex-serviceman. So he, he had had sight and then lost it when he was serving in Yugoslavia. And then we did some tests basically. And um, it, we, actually it, it's, it's even harder than it sounds because we tried to, you know, just even going down what I thought was a straight. Yeah. Turns out the straight at Dunsfold isn't straight. It's yeah. got a kink in it. So we created like a system. So I used the, you know, the clock face to give three o'clock, nine o'clock for turning and how much to steer and all that. Um, and a lot of shouting. And we kind of worked out a way, but it, it, the first day we never did a complete lap. Oh, it was, wow. was section by section yeah. um, to give him some idea. And then that was it. And, I, and then it was a million dollar question. Well, can, can we film it? You know, Is he going to do a lap? And I thought he would do a lap. I did a voice recording for him. So using the, the, the system of communication we, we built Very up. Very cool. And he memorized the lap from that and came back two weeks later. He, and he said, I've been listening to that recording every single day. It's like, you're a legend. Mm. And, uh, you know, between lots of smoking breaks, he was sweating, but the guy was absolutely sweating bullets. He was so determined to do well. Yeah. He, um, we did one, but the energy it was taking out of him was huge. Because I thought, right, if we don't do it in the first two or three laps, his, because his, his mind, it, yeah, as you yeah, know, yeah. you know, you get mental overload, it'd be too much. So his second lap was connected, and I only helped him with the steering on one corner, which is the, the follow through. And there was one more. So I stayed with him for the lap, obviously, to keep up the running commentary. Yeah. Um, and his third lap was so good, I thought it'd be a shame for me to touch the wheel. So um, through the tire wall piece, he's doing nearly 100 miles an hour, which is what I didn't oh, want him to hit. Oh, wow. and, it, and the car could, you know, it could move around and how, without the visual um, element, it's very difficult to counter steer and know how much yours yeah, is in the car yeah. or whatever. So I had been putting my thumb on the wheel and I just lied to him and just said, yep, got it. He rattled through and he nailed the whole thing. I was just getting goosebumps for him knowing what was so coming. Cool. And um, he managed to get the last two, the, the most difficult two corners. He hooked them up. Um, I think we spun across it didn't, it didn't matter but i got the got the stopwatch down and he was under two minutes which oh, was just amazing, amazing. Yeah. And he, so, he, so he beat about four people 
uh, went <laughs> yeah, for a while. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so like good. first I got to say to him, like, you know, you did it on your own <clears throat> and his, you know, it was super emotional for him. Yeah, and, I bet, uh, I bet. But he'd achieved what he'd set out to do and you know, top, top man. That's amazing. That's really cool. Mm. Um, right. We'll rattle through these ones. Roman says, what's been the scariest vehicle you've ever driven? I've never been, I've never been frightened in a car, but, but then I guess, um, where you feel you're carrying something that is, um, um, you know, A, because it's extremely expensive and B, the speed of it, it would be extremely destructive if anything went wrong, was the the LMP1. So, well, LMP900, it was called. It's when I raced um, in the sports car series. So top category at Le Mans, basically. And um, it was just an unbelievable step. I mean, I've been racing Formula 3. I, test, I tested some Formula 3000 kit. So you've got nearly Formula One power in a Formula 3000 car. You've got nearly Formula One downforce, huge, fat, slick tires. And the LMP was another level up, had more downforce than an F1 car. It had a Formula One V10 Judd engine in the back, um, screaming at about 11 and a half thousand RPM. Wow. And unbelievable response. So on a bumpy track, the wheels would spin up to, up to third gear. Jesus. So you're constantly being reminded of how yeah, much power yeah. it had. And, and the, you know, without earplugs, if one of them slipped loose when you're driving, you'd be just that ear would be deaf. Yeah, for traction hours. control, ABS, and your sensors, they're all going mad. None of that. I know. So, <laughs> no, 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 nothing. No power steering, um, mega caster. So, um, like, really heavy, you know, like like your car is before you turn the ignition on. It's yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that heavy to steer it wow. and um, sequential gearbox. So, and that, when you're really going for it, uh, you know, traveling at those high speeds and you're doing 200 miles an hour constantly, you know, everywhere, everywhere you can see, it's within one, two, three, four, five gear changes. In the, in the amount of time you're doing 180. Oh, so you're just seeing these, you, you, you come and look at your speed data and stuff, um, the, the readouts, places like Monza, and you're looking at the average speeds are just so high. I think averaging 145 or something like this. Christ. And top speeds over, um, I think, were we getting 200 there? If it's, it's near as damn it. Yeah, yeah. And you just think, okay, this is serious. Yeah. And, um, I love it. It was the best car I ever drove. The most fun, the most rewarding, the most challenging. Um, but yeah, you're just thinking, you know, anything that happens, you've got to be so super on it yeah, because yeah, yeah. A, a tire deflation or something like that, um, it, you'd be into a world of hurt. How long does it take you to get used to a car like that? Because obviously when we were filmed with you the other day, you asked to just take the GT86 out. I think you did maybe two laps and that was it. You were set. But something like that, does that, do you find yourself taking more time? Or, or has there been cars where you've been like, Oh, this is a real struggle to get used to. That yeah, that was the ultimate challenge. That the the um, Le Mans car. <clears throat> there was one jump I remember when I started in single seater racing. There was a series called Vauxhall Lotus. So I went from sixteen hundred, yes, one point six liter engines um, to a two liter, and suddenly, and that in a very lightweight car with with slick tires and wings. And I remember the acceleration because they weigh nothing. These little single seat racing cars, and the, so the power to weight ratio was was mega. And the gear changing, I just, it was, it was a fleeting moment, but it felt like it went fast forward for a minute. And my brain was just adjusting to this wow. new acceleration. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of laps later, that was gone. Yeah. And then just like, okay, bop, 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 bop. This is normal now. This is the new normal. <laughs> um, the, the jump to the Ascari, that was another massive leap. And I, so my teammate at the time, Werner Lutberger, South African guy, built like a bulldog. And I was watching him testing. And so normally from a high speed, the acceleration is not noticeable. You know, he was in, and he was coming out at Barcelona on, onto the straight fourth gear. And I saw it, even though it was already traveling at 120, jump out of the corner as he, as he got full power on and then just ripped up to sort of 190 down oh. the straight. You could hear it. And then, and then the braking, the deceleration, it's just a vertical line. When you look at the speed traces, it just kills the speed, comes down like wow. that. And uh, I was looking at him and he was built like um, Stallone was for the Rocky movie. And I was thinking, yeah, okay, I'm not built like that. Why is he built like that? And why is that necessary? <laughs> <laughs> and he was there, put the shades on, and it was my turn. He had his arms crossed, and uh, it's just watching me get in this car. And I'm going, coming from a little F3 car with little tiny wheels and stuff. Lots of downforce, but nowhere near this. And um, I did one lap, and, and I noticed his chest was heaving when he came at the end of his little runs, the runs he was doing. Uh, one lap. It was like all in. It was, a, it was just a street fight just to just to manhandle it. It was yeah. so much energy and, and physical endurance to do it. That was one lap. And then it was these three lap stints. And I thought, 
Is there do you is there some sort of cold bath that you have? <laughs> is there a system for people, for wimps like me that aren't used to this? Yeah. I could do three laps and that was it. I was done. I think done. the system is called steroids, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Should have gotten some steroids. Yeah. So initially that was like I could do three laps at some pace and then by lap four I'd be a I'd be a fraction slower, which is yeah. un which is totally unacceptable. So um, it was my that was that was very early days. So they forgave that. So I did short runs for that first day. And then it was three hours in the gym every single day, getting the strength yeah. in to be able to do hour long stints. And then you go somewhere like Sebring where you're, you know, you're doing, I don't know, how many laps it was, 30, I can't remember how that, I mean, an hour long run basically on a bumpy track, fighting with the steering the whole time to control it and to, to maintain that speed. Cause you've got to be juggling what the tire, yeah, what, you know, you're, yeah, on the, you're on a knife edge and you've got to be the juggler. If your arms get a bit tired, they slow down a bit, your lap times just get slower. Mm -hmm. So that was a big case of evolving to suit that and then after after that everything feels a lot more straightforward so you you know yeah. adapt pretty quickly to everything you get a good feeling for how much g a car has and top gear to be fair that was um really where that i it was i, I learned that much much faster who have so many different cars in a day even um to be able to get in and, and adapt very quickly um so that definitely helped shape it because with a road car tire you've only got five laps and they're done they just get so hot. It yeah, just it's yeah. like blue tack on a hot summer's day. It just doesn't want to doesn't want to grip anymore. Do you think Ben that if your identity was never found out that you'd still be doing Top Gear steak? I don't know. Um, who knows? Maybe. I mean, it it, it was so much fun. Um, I, I'd always hoped that it would evolve into something more. Um, so like the brick car race, I thought was brilliant, and we could have done you know something in America, maybe done some NASCAR, or it was actually we were very close to doing a Le Mans project um, that didn't quite come off. So I think if things had gone that direction, if everyone had stayed there a bit longer, um, but in the end, of course, everybody left in, was it 2013? I can't remember when everyone um, uh, yeah. departed. Yeah, that's, that's, but, that's that's the the fracar. Yeah, yeah, the fracar. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the stick's still going. But yeah, he's doing true. less. I mean, he should be doing more. Do you, do you know the identity of the stick? Might do. Might, who, what? Go on. Uh, it, Exclusive. There, there, we go. there we go. Record is off now. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I do. Do you actually? Yeah. Go on. What? <laughs> how, much, how much, Ben? How much, Ben? No, how can't. Much? Another well, promo of the book? <laughs> <laughs> Aston Martin, great book. He's done well. I mean, the new, yeah, baby Stig had grown into a, you know. So he's young? <laughs> she might be, or he or she. Did I say what? Hermaphrodite. It could be, it could be anything under there. Okay. <laughs> he, she, or it has been there longer than I was. So yeah. fair play. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, long may it continue. Perfect. But I'd love to see this dig do more because I think you know it seems to be paired back quite a lot, and you know they should, they should definitely get him in more in, or her or in, <laughs> involved in the challenges more. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you're good friends. We're all friends in the Stig fraternity. <laughs> right, right, right. I still, uh, I still go for drinks with the Eco Stig, the Green Stig. Remember him? Uh, do I remember him? I, I think I remember. There's been a few. Do you I have was, a WhatsApp group? It's just there's a WhatsApp. Oh, or it just yeah. sticks in it. It's perfect. It's, it's encrypted, so it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was German Stig. I got. To, I put a mullet. Oh for that. yeah! Wow. I wasn't fat Stig. That was. I drew the line there. The yeah. fat suits. And they had. They got a real. You know, Rig Stig, the truck driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, was it was, Chinese Stig as well? It was Japanese. Japan, sorry, Japanese he was Stig. Martial art expert. Martial arts. So that wasn't you. Not me. <laughs> no. Um, African Stig. Uh, was that you? Not me. No. Not you. <laughs> uh, who, who else? But I did. I did do Green Stig. Yeah. That was me. And what about Current Stig? Is that you? Maybe. Oh. Could Explosive. you imagine? Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I might have popped back in occasionally. <laughs> Could you imagine? But I didn't. Maybe I did. Did Who you? So you have. We should do a challenge. I think we should. I wish I should challenge the stick yeah. to something. Challenge yourself. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? God, he's um, had years of practice, hasn't he? <laughs> Am I right in thinking that not even your own family knew that you were stick? You had a story about your dad in the studio. At the beginning, none of them knew. Um, but then, yeah, basically towards the end, it was safer to have people close to you that did know than, than not, because you had to start being ready to fob people off, otherwise you're gonna get caught out. And I did feel rotten because my dad came to one of the studio days and I'd said, look, I'm gonna be doing my thing. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll see you at the end of the day. And uh, so I was, dri I was driving something and it was one of the days they had a big, for some reason they had a crowd there. They always had a crowd there queuing, but as in they were actually allowed out, you oh, know, right. they weren't in the studio. So they were out drinking tea and all that sort of st stuff. And Wilma said, oh, go, go on, do a walkthrough and give them something to look at. So, um, so I did that and, you know, people taking their pictures and what you're not. And my dad came up to me and said, oh, 
Ben that looked like a tricky oh. car to drive. Oh. And I felt like a real sod because I just completely cut him dead, just kept walking. Oh. Yeah. I thought, yeah. I can't, I can't stop. Your poor dad. And he'd be like, that's the Stig's dad, look, and he knows his name. <laughs> so I thought, no, and it, was, and it was one of those moments like, oh, I know, I can't stop, gotta keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, went, I had to find him later, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> I told you not to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Nathan asks, what's been your biggest crash? Oh, uh, biggest shunt was the um, one I did one big crash in GT in Romania. That was nasty. And um, I suppose you always think when you're racing that you'll, you'll I don't know what, what these acts, it's an accident, so you don't see it coming, but you will be in control in some way. Um, you always fancy that there's something you can do, which there, and there is, there's so many things you can do in the car to try and mitigate what's going on. At least you try and hang on to that. Um, sense of control but in this case it was it happened so quickly and um and i just it was so unexpected because it was a qualifying session um i poked the car is romania was this very busy street circuit and i just poked the wall um in practice so i've missed most of the practice session and uh, going into an ill street track you really want that circuit time to memorize the place and everything um and that put me a stupid mistake anyway i felt i had enough um memory logs that i could still pull out a good time and uh, and it was in the Ascari GT, the KZR1. The car was brilliant, had a bit of pad knock off, and I thought, well, that compensated, and I put together a really, really, really good lap and put it on pole. And that's all I could think Amazing. about. It was a qualifying session, checkered flag. Yeah. The boys were talking to me on the radio, went down a couple of gears into a right-hander and sped up again to come basically on the way back into the pits. Yeah. And um, really, maybe in hindsight, oblivious to what else was going on, I, but but at the same time not, because the session was over. Yeah. Saw a crash car, saw the yellow flags, backed off for the flags, and that was my that was the new focus. And as soon as I backed off for the, the crashed car, someone behind just stoved into the rear and just went turned across, I think because A, he was still trying to, he was basically disobeying the checkered. Right. And the yellow. Yeah, yeah. And went, went across. Anyway, turned me around into the, and I, I spun, I thought, oh, I'll bounce off that and I'll be okay. Um, but it didn't. It, the car, my car, spun and landed driver side on to the gearbox and engine of this crashed Lambo, and just literally just from 130 to a dead stop. Jeez. Oh. So um, that was, uh, you know, this, the, the well-built car, and you're and you're buttoned in so tight in the belt. But I, I moved enough to open the door and kind of half come out of the car, and and it, yeah, it went you know, it was like a domino effect. So four broken ribs. Oh, and I think bloody hell. a bone in my neck. I think, oh, um, which I found out about later, and very difficult to breathe because it completely winded yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and quite painful. So um, yeah, that was a, a fairly big one. But the you know, medical staff were incredible, mm -hmm. and I don't remember getting out of the car. So I think I passed out for that bit. Um, you and, have uh, lived, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. So what can you say? I mean, it, it was frustrating because that would have been a great weekend. Yeah. I was really pissed off. Yeah, and, I bet. you know, yeah. it was, the car was amazing. And would have been a great result to have, to have take, finished that yeah. um, race properly, um, but yeah, no, I mean it, it, the, the track guy, the, you know, the, the doctor out there was incredible and uh, very well looked after, and you know, off you go, mm. lie down for a bit, and then um, realise you can walk around with broken ribs. So I was back to work the following week. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I was back on Why? Top Gear. Actually, the following week, um, we did the it was the race across London. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Was that um, was that boat, bike, yeah, and public car. transport, yeah. Uh, boat. It was boat. Yeah, boat. Oh, there were four. That's right. There. There. Yeah. Last, yeah, I was yeah. number four. Yeah, of course you were on the. Oh, you were just on the tube and stuff, weren't you? Oh, yeah, <laughs> just on the tube. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He oh, was yeah. the tube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny because yeah, they, we had all these different routes, and I was bumbling around buses and stuff like that, and um, it was funny getting some funny looks in London. But Londoners just like Psh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the tube, they just didn't care less. I, I have another question. Um, so someone actually sent me a message. Uh, I think in 2012 or something like that, there's a picture of him as a kid next to the Stig. Apparently the Stig went to a school and did like a little event or so. There must have been like a lot of times when the Stig appeared at a school, a function, a blah, a blah. Was that, that wasn't always you, was it? No. No. So I don't know. So yeah. that, that poor boy who, who just sent crushed me a the message. Soul, was yeah. all that, those school prob children. that probably wasn't actual Stig because he actually looked a lot shorter than you yeah. as well. Yeah, maybe yeah. it was though. Uh, maybe or was covering it? my tracks oh. <laughs> no i mean yeah there was I, I did we did a fair bit of uh surprisingly amount of non-car stuff so um but it's, so it's possible i don't know i don't remember that okay moment, but um you know, maybe it was a uh, new stick could be what's the, his name again 
his whole <laughs> its name. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get you today, am I? <laughs> no. Right then, we're now going to move it on to a car story that's been submitted by Ellis and Ethan. Why don't you read it out? He says, Hi guys, thought you'd get a kick out of this, seeing as somewhat involves you all directly. So going back- Not, not Ben, though. No. Not Ben. Doesn't involve okay. Ben, no. Sorry, he didn't know Sorry, you were on top Not in the gang. No, no. <laughs> not yet. Oh, oh, maybe we can make a new gang. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our very own stick. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Uh, we'll call it the oh. squid. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be Ethan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, can you imagine? Oh, I can't. It'd be don't so disappointing. Yeah. How slowly can we get these cars out of the track? <laughs> So going back a week, I finally had the opportunity to buy a Mark One MX-5. Oh, yes, Ellis. Smart man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> which will serve as my project car for the foreseeable future. Seeing Alex's journey with Phil really inspired oh, yes. me to go for the MX-5. So when I saw the advert go up, I just had to drive up and get it. Fast forward to today, my car has been in the garage getting MOT'd over the weekend. I'm a soldier in the British Army, so unfortunately, I'm only at home on weekends, so I wasn't able to pick up my MX-5 today. Although, this afternoon, while I was at work, I got a text off my dad, who's a taxi driver, saying he had Ethan from Car Throttle in his car. To say the least, this took me by surprise. I then get a picture sent to me of my dad and Alex, which confirmed the event. Apparently, my dad showed Ethan some pictures of the car. Hope you liked it. I think, yeah, it was yellow. Was the yellow one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. I just thought you might want to hear it. it's been a crazy coincidence for me that the guys that helped me inspire me to get the MX-5 ended up seeing it a week after I bought it. Thanks for giving me the idea. Keep up the great work on the channel. Cheers, Ellis. So Good give Ben a bit Ellis. of backstory yeah. there. Oh, yeah. So we, um, a couple of weeks ago, put out a video which was um, Honda motorbike versus public transport. So Alex on the bike versus Jack and I. <laughs> And we race to the Lake District and Jack and mine and Jack's last leg was a taxi ride. Cheating. Everyone uh, in the comments is saying it's not public transport. I, I, I don't, oh, don't care. Yeah, it's still one. Care. one. Yeah. Did, did uh, we go in that lake? No, no, no. no, no you no. went in the lake. So no. I won. Okay. Um, <laughs> and the taxi driver knew, he knew car throttle. We yeah. just got chatting. Um, and yeah, he showed us his son's mx5 and stuff like that and then he actually slowed you down yeah. even more he slowed he? me down yeah so he dropped off ethan and jack they won the race i got to the car park and i i said i said to the taxi driver i actually approached him and i said which way is the bridge he said oh it's down there and then i just said you haven't happened to just drop off ethan and jack have you and he said no i'm waiting for some japanese tourists <laughs> he lied like, oh. he lied to me and, I was like, <laughs> and he was like can i can i grab a picture yeah. i was like yeah all right so i bloody took a picture with him even after he lied the so, audacity to ask for a picture after he it. lied i to know I how know. did you lose well, it just wasn't no, quick I, enough. I, I, it right. just wasn't yeah. quick right. enough on the okay. bike. So there was a, tr- a tracking car with us. So I was kind of being a little bit held up by that. No. Not really. No, not really. Also, Ethan lied because he said that, that they'd missed their transfer. So I was like, okay, I'm going to eat and you know, we, we, take my time. No, we just sent a message with those words in it. And it was up to you to decide whether you stopped for longer. or in, insert, or... insert a little bit of footage and see if you think that this is, this is bang on or not. I think it's totally out of order. Do you think if I text them saying we've missed our train, that they would believe it? Also tell Alex this, and then that might force him to slow down a bit. Oh, I might, yeah, I might slow him up a bit. Is that poor form? That foul play, yeah. Yeah. Do it. But I lost by 20 minutes. Oh, that's quite, that's quite yeah. a lot, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you took the train, yes? Yeah, yeah. train, tube, bus, and taxi ride at the yeah. end. Yeah. 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 Yes, um, so Ellis, I haven't seen your car. I don't want to see your car because your dad's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> right, shall we move on to car advice? Yeah, what we got this week? Yeah. Jack, uh, do you want to take it away? I can, yes. Hi guys, I currently own a 2014 Fiesta ST3, which I love, but after buying a house in the countryside, my commute is now 30 minutes. Sure, the ST is fun, but I want something a a bit more comfortable. I'm in two minds as to whether to get something newish performance diesel, like a Focus ST or a Golf GTD, or should I get an older diesel barge like a Jaguar XF Sport Brake, XJ or 730D? I'm on a strict 13K budget, so wondering if you could help me with any out-of-the-box suggestions. Cheers for reading and 
creating great content for me to listen to on my way back from work. All the best, Damon. Very good. Jack, do you have any suggestions? Mm. Out of the box. Do you know what? This question instantly made me think of the time you suggested we put a PD diesel engine in an MX-5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone's actually done that. Someone's building a, a diesel MX-5. That's I think insane. someone um, wrote into car story. So if you're getting on well with that, then update us because yeah. I would love to drive that. It's quite out the box, isn't it? As well? It's very out yeah, the box. Yeah. I don't think that's kind of what he's after. No, he's no, saying no, Golf no. GTD <laughs> or an MX-5 with a 1.9 PD engine. <laughs> <laughs> not quite there. Uh, Any serious suggestions? Uh, I'd say the Golf GTD. I think he's Bang on there. I'm yeah. going to say that, aren't I? You I'm are a golf before. And golf like fanboy. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. You're so. not the only golf fanboy. Because the Royal Mail are also fanboys of the golf. There's the mention. Oh, there's there I was wondering is, yeah. where it was. Ben? Phil Ben in. Yeah, do, do you know? <laughs> do oh, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. You love it when this oh, happens, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Roll your sleeves up. I look at a blank face and I'm like, yes, I'm in. So, <laughs> tail end of last year, you may have seen everywhere. There was on the A40 right near my house a story of a Royal Mail lorry pushing a Golf GTI sideways down the A40. That was Jack. All right. <laughs> really? You know, yeah. got rammed by a mail van. Being yeah. a truck. Yeah. Being pushed. He didn't he see me. Moved, moved over and um, pushed me down the road about like half a mile. A you mile. mean you cut across him? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that because it fuels the rumors. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just, what did the insurance company say? Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, they, they took responsibility. <laughs> I can't believe that poor Royal Mail lorry driver. You really screwed him over. Yeah, I really ruined his day, didn't I? <laughs> Are you one of those people that breaks hard in front of trucks? <laughs> Don't join in. Be well, on my side. I'm just please. curious. What, how did it talk us through what happened with your shunt? Uh, we well, love a good crash story. Oh, no, we do. Yeah, so it, it was in that faulty zone going over the, the big crossing, and I, I, I was just cruising. On your, the, I was, just on your phone. So you mean, you mean speeding? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm doing 40. Undertaking. <laughs> I was doing for he just going along. And then all of a sudden, I'm just <laughs> being twisted and spun around. So you undertook the lorry? No. He... <laughs> all right. I see what you're doing. I'm not, I'm not going to join him. He's, okay. got, he's got a Paxman on you. <laughs> just, okay. Which, which, which part of the truck came into contact with your car? Uh, it was the front left. The, the front left of the truck? Yeah. Okay. And then the whole of the front. <laughs> because I was just staring <laughs> into the grill around. as I was stroking Volvo. the front. Volvo! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's not a good place to be. Yeah, oh, no. also the person who apparently saved his life was none other than Ellie Goulding. She was in a car next to all of this and she, yeah. she told the driver to stop and then she- Stop pushing Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stop pushing Jack. She got out and- she got hit, So the was, driver couldn't see you? Who just no, brrr. no, yeah, she couldn't see me. For how long were you being pushed? Uh, for about half, well, the whole whole of the overpass. Yeah, about stop half it. a mile. Are you a YouTube a sensation with this? He yeah, is. I'm actually literally. Yeah. He was everywhere. Yeah, Will I'm, you play this again? Because I've not seen it. Oh, okay, watch it after man. after this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, I'll show, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, show you. We'll it's show great. You it's great. It's really yeah, good. So she yeah. had to wind the window down and go. You're pushing a frightened chap. I th um, golf. Her driver just pulled in front of her, everything, put hazards on, and slowed wow. down. This was after as well. So as I'm there on the front of this lorry, <laughs> some guy drives past, trying to phone Royal Mail. <laughs> yeah, some guy drives past and looks me dead in the eye. Have I ever told you this? Looks me dead in the eye. And I'm like, I'm there. I shrug my shoulders like, <laughs> and he just looks at me and he's like, I don't know, mate. He's like, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> and he sped off. He's like, there's nothing I could do about this. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to crack on with my journey. Right, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. Um, right. So, two. So someone actually... Um, was sorry, Jack. Someone actually was driving sorry. and video recording the incident, so there yeah. is actually I seen footage it, of it. This is just as it's slowing down, and that's Ellie Goulding in the in the Range Rover. Sorry, we can't show you this footage because um, copyright. But if you type in Royal Mail lorry pushing car, you'll you'll see it. That's can't miss it. Next level. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah. Where where were we? Why did we bring this up? Jack, uh, why did you bring up? Um, he wants a diesel, so he's going to get a lorry. Oh, yeah, oh, he's yeah, gonna yeah, get, yeah. yeah. Get pushed by a lorry. That's our advice. Is that, so you get a payout? Is that <laughs> yeah, it's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that your 730D suggestion is quite a good one, Damon. I'm going to stick with that. Also, if you want to go a bit more kind of Chelsea tractor, you can get a Range Rover Sport diesel. Um, oh. Maybe get one of those. Yeah. This, this isn't really our, our remit. 13 grand. Yeah, that's, that's just, yeah that's Are you too mental, much. mate? Yeah. Give us, give us 1,300 quid and then we'll give yeah. you suggestions yeah. all day long. It's 12 and a half grand over our budget. I know. Uh, just what can't. are you doing? You're listening to the wrong podcast, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, what about you? Uh, well, 
I sort of overprepared for this did question. You, did yeah, you? I did a lot of research. Um, and I sort of came to the conclusion that Golf GTD is the one. Oh, yeah. Why yeah, is that? Loads of research. Golf's a great and yeah. it's got a diesel yeah and uh it's there on the page can read i can it. see it in front of me i can see him in it now he'll look great in that thanks yeah okay ben, ben? <laughs> anything to add ben do you have any suggestions i think the modern cars both the, the ford and the golf you're not going to go wrong with that because um the, those engines now are so highly developed they're going to get you know for the power for the efficiency the emissions and all that and with the way the wind is blowing you know the politics of decision making that goes on in these cities or the ULES zones yeah um it's really easy to ban stuff even though diesels now are depending on how you look at it I mean which one do you want it's um they actually create less pollution in terms of the planet but obviously you know there's a particulate matter which is that's good for humans but you've got to pick your choice um but uh, but generally speaking cities are ruling against diesel they so are, um yeah. if you'll be future proof and you want to go diesel i try i'd steer towards the modern if yeah. you're going to go that route, but it, very wise, a, some fun stuff you can do with older cars. Yeah, yeah. if you're going to go old though, you've got to go petrol. True. So, yeah. What would you go for? Thirteen grand. Well, I, I think he's looking at the right type of thing. You can wind the clock back. You get something like that. That's even old. That's an older Focus or a, or a Golf. You know, you're probably going to half that budget possibly. Yeah. But, um, yeah. For thirteen, you're going to get a lot of car. Yeah. Um, unless you go for the real shed like an XJ12 or something. We've got oh, gone way oh, off topic now. Yeah. <laughs> but I did fall in love with one. We filmed um, Curfew, the series. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that. Zombies yeah, yeah. everywhere. It's yeah, on the sky, yeah. I think. Um, and uh, the main baddie drove an XJ, I think it was XJ12, and it was a sort of green and white racing livery, and it was absolute badass. <laughs> it was amazing. A thundering, um, you know, fire-breathing engine. You could really smell it in the car as well. So after a few few minutes with the engine running, like, <laughs> a little bit lightheaded, so I need to step out for a minute. But we had, to, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was really good. What was? <laughs> what's funny with these older cars? Oh, bro, can I just keep going off topic? Oh, go for it. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. Well, it's the engine mountings. Um, these cars are perfectly fine until I get in them, and then the engine <laughs> fork snaps out of the mounting. Wow. So we didn't, we couldn't understand what was happening, but it, I kept destroying the radiators. And we'd look at the radiator. The Crashing back. into stuff? Nope. <laughs> like, oh, wow, the radiator is bleeding again. All that pipe's been knocked off. And the guys kept saying, how are you doing that? I, I said, I don't know. So I'm sliding it around the corner and gassing it. And I hit the brakes. And then it just, yeah, it, it just shits itself. <laughs> and we realized that the entire engine was coming out of its mountings. The block, the bush, bushes are all um, basically dissolved over time. And it was just going, oh, just and smashing that, it. And, and the fan was eating the radiator. Oh, wow. and, then, and then it was sitting back down. And the mechanic's like, what is happening when you drive this thing? So yeah, it was the heavy braking is what it didn't like. Now, this happened with, with Rolls Royce as well. We had a couple of those on um, Mordecai, another film we did. And the stunt coordinator very wisely said, Rowley Earlham's like, he does all the Game of Thrones um, oh, stuff yeah, now. Yeah. He said, go and do a brake test in those. And make sure it's all right. Just sit 30 miles an hour, press the brake, hard brake. All the water came out. And the egg, same thing, engine snapped out of the mountains <laughs> and the radiator and then sat back down. It's like, right, get the other one out. And the other one was fine. And that's what we filmed with. Um, <laughs> But, so I've digressed, but there's a lot of value in those um, beasties. Yes. Yeah. There's not much fuel economy, but you know, if you're going to go old, you're going to go old Jack. Yeah. Go Very out, cool. get some real, get some. And then, yeah. and then, you know, in a few years, when they ban that engine, you just slot the electric motor in. Yeah. yeah. Cheap, cheap, cheap conversion. Yeah. And then it looks badass, yeah. but is, you know, yeah. environmentally friendly. You, you've actually got a lot of history with um, damaging cars. Uh, we haven't actually given you the invoice yet, but. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> for the for the video where Ben teaches um, Ethan how to do stunts and stuff, he wrote off the GT86 that we we lent him. So uh, you you actually drove into the drone. Yeah, when you definitely were doing not drift. the other way around. No, no, no. no you were no, doing no, drifting no, shots, and you you looked at it. You were like, "Hold my beer!" <laughs> Smashed into it, and you caused a six centimeter little scratch. Mm. You didn't have, actually like manage to break the paint, so it's all right. We're going to let you off, but it's going to be a five grand bill <laughs> for us. All right? Yeah, 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 yeah. In 20 years, I've never been attacked by a camera team before. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was his fault because um, he was behind the camera and then he was like, oh, you're going to make me drive. And you, you looked a bit tearful at first and you, you pulled you it really together. Did, yeah. But I knew that like your, your little your brothers were like, we'll get him, we'll get him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the drone guy kept trying to hit the car. He kept, kept, kept missing. He, you know, I, was like, I was ducking and diving and eventually he hit his mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah it good. It'd make a great shot though. Oh, it'd be so oh, yeah, good. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually phoned Toyota and um, he was actually... He was actually all right with it. Yeah. I, I kind of 
you know, prefaced it by saying, done a little bit of damage, but yeah. the footage is amazing. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, I really look forward to yeah. seeing that. Well, that is, yeah, the press officers go out there. So there's a big list to have on the wall, you know, it's a big whiteboard and they have all the different outlets or media outlets are on there. And you, cause you think you're still getting on wonderfully, but there's a little mark there. Yeah, I know about the mark. Yeah. Throttle yeah. broke that car. Yeah. And then yeah. You're, in a, you're in a bad list, the haters. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, 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 we've actually been on a bad list before. We didn't even drive the car. It's yeah. just a video that we did. Mm. The Top Gear list was, I used to love going in the office and seeing what they were up to. And they had their loves us and hates us list. Oh, really? And the loves us list was really short. <laughs> and the hates us one went all the way down this long list. So occasionally you think, oh, and you could see them straining to think, how, how, could, how can we do something nice for them? But that was the, 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 that was the beauty of Top Gear, wasn't it? There's no advertising, they just didn't care. Yeah, yeah. They just did not care. Um, Peugeot, um, when they didn't, they refused to give them, they, they reviewed it and they said it was a terrible car. This was Peugeot was diesel estate, I can't watch what it was, something 06 or something. Anyway. Yeah. It was a big, big lumbering, nothing really good to say about it car. We really love Peugeot, by the way. Big fan of your work. I like some of the yeah. new Peugeots, but this was not one of them. It was like 05, 04. It was, it was a real dog. And um, so they knew that it was going to get panned. So they refused to give the car over for the really? studio shots. And I just couldn't believe the car because I was like, what is he doing? He's got this bucket of horse shit. <laughs> the camera, they said, we've got the next best thing because they wouldn't give us the car. And the camera panned down to no. the to the steaming oh, turds and wow that was that was pretty savage yeah it's quite <laughs> damning quite damning yeah. yeah so anyway we're making up for it now there you go if you're loving peugeot yeah so oh, what have yeah, you big time. what have you tried recently of theirs uh anyway let's move uh, it on I so I, I haven't a uh, 95 106 yeah <laughs> great also, car couple yeah. of them i used yeah. to um when i used to live in exeter i used to do domino's deliveries in a peugeot 405 estate 1.9 diesel turbo that i used to run on vegetable oil Poof. Paddy, that car was called. <laughs> Great machine. So you used to go and fuel that up at the chip shop? Yeah, I used to do the rounds, um, loads of chip shops, and I used to get phone calls, um, this Geordie guy in a fish and chip shop. Why, well, hey, man, I've got some, got some fuel for you, mate. <laughs> and I used to come around, you know, during that shift. Like, Who's that Geordie? <laughs> Why, well, yeah, man, I'm in deck late, you know, man. That's good. Veg oil in, in car, you know, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? In car. In car. <laughs> hey, bastard, put it in car. <laughs> but when you were driving around, didn't everyone think that you were farting wherever you went? Oh, no, it's great. No, I, I used to be known as the, you know, the guy with the car that smells awesome. <laughs> that weirdo okay. with that yeah. smelly car. Fart gas, man. Fart yeah. gas, man. Although one time when I parked up at Domino's um, and I reversed into the bay and then I had a 20 litre vat of used vegetable oil with chips and everything and it fell over and it poured oh. out of my boot. Oh, that, yeah. that was a right off. So you used to that. strain the chips out. I did. Yeah, I used to use bed sheets in my car. <laughs> I used to have a 100 liter vat, and I used to have you know bed sheets and stuff, and just pour it in. That's amazing. Overnight, and then in the morning, I'd have freezel. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's bigger. It was and the great. Peugeot didn't mind it. Well, it used to um, chew through fuel filters quite a lot because it clogs it up, especially when it's cold and it's chips. more viscous. <laughs> yeah. But genuinely, in the morning, you'd have a look and you would see bits of you know fat and, yeah. and batter yeah. and Pizza. chips. Just Gen gobble genuinely. that all and that's why, yeah. So you have breakfast. <laughs> Sorry? You have breakfast. Exactly, yeah. That's yeah. why I'm just so, so lean. <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah. how often are you changing the filter? Uh, I was probably changing a filter every three weeks. <laughs> every wow. 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I used to bulk buy filters from, you know, Motor Factor. Basically. That's class. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Living the dream I was. Um, oh. Anyway, let's now move it on to a section that we like to call Grind My Gears. And Nathan has something that annoys him. Hi guys, following on from your discussion regarding merging, I have another common occurrence that really grinds my gears people slowing down when merging onto motorways. For me, this is just simply a sign of incompetence. If you're about to merge onto a road where all, all the traffic is going significantly faster than you, why on earth would you slow down? Which not only reduces the window of opportunity to successfully merge, but it also means that when you do, you're likely to hold up other drivers already on the motorway, or you'll need to accelerate harder to get up to speed anyway. If you fail to merge entirely, then you'll just create a hold up on the on-ramp instead of allowing free flowing traffic. He continues. God, yeah, he's wow, he's going on. Yeah. As you're moving onto the on-ramp, look for gaps, speed up, match speeds, and then merge. Some people can't seem to process more than one action at once. And if that's the case, then I'd argue that motorway driving isn't <laughs> suited to you. Rant over. Thanks for listening. Nathan. 
Very fair very, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, very well yeah. worded yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, that really irritates me as well. Because you just want to crack on. You need to accelerate hard. Mm. And then some people, they're just too nervous and they don't. They lot, don't take the opportunity. A lot of people do it on um, slow slip roads as well. They, st well, they start- That's what he means, yeah. Well, like they start, yeah, they start creeping forward and then they're at the end and then they're just stuck. There. They stop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're supposed I, to use that to build up your speed. Yeah, and also if you, if you get to a, the end of a slip road and you stop, it's like, no, just just <laughs> use a hard shoulder. Just carry on yeah, going. Yeah. Don't never stop on yeah. a live motor when yeah. it's dumb. It's something that Jack would do. <laughs> Probably, uh, yeah. I'll just go with it now. Yeah. <laughs> I just dead stop for no reason. <laughs> Aston Martin have come up with a good solution for this, I think. Big power. No, they've gone, they've done the, what's called the continuation series of the DB5. So it's like the Bond car, basically. And they put the gadgets in it. So it's got twin Browning machine guns in the headlamps. Oh, oh, so oh, when something's yeah. wrong, uh, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just evaporate it. Can we read about that in your new book? You, you could. Actually, oh, there's a little bit on there. Yeah. There we go. New book, um, Aston Martin. Unfortunately, they're not real machine guns. Oh, uh, but don't you know, read the book then. You know, you, were into, you guys are modifiers. You get that on a Mazda. Oh, I could. Oh, Imagine filled with machine guns. Yeah. That'd be great. It'd be cool then. Only that would make it cool. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe you went there. I went there. You, Someone had to say you it. You piece of shit. <laughs> it's really helpful. Um, Nathan, I'm completely with you. Yeah. I, I think there should be some sort of school, school where you can learn competence and confidence as like well. Like a pass plus type. Very, pass yeah. plus, yeah, thank yeah. you. I did my yeah. pass plus, did you? Did you? No, I didn't actually. No. You explained no. a lot. No? Never had one <laughs> lesson. Really? I gave the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if Ben's like, yeah, I don't actually have a driver's license. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. No, it, I, I had a brilliant instructor, Dave Clark, um, down in Tiverton. I uh, still remember his name. Oh yeah. He in Tiverton, I learned in Exeter. He was far. magic. He was a brilliant instructor, very patient man. <laughs> <laughs> While you're there doing handbrake turns. Yeah, yeah, I bet I, he was. I had three lessons with him and he's like, all right there, boy, you go on there. That was it. And then, uh, yeah. Three lessons. Three lessons. And, then off. and in fact, I don't think we, I never even went on a motorway. Mm. That was kind of like, you go with your, you know, fortunately my dad gave me the ropes and uh, it was, that was a bit of a wake up call because it is totally different. Yeah. Anyway. My uh, instructor, he was about 70 when he taught me. Um, Bill it. Martin. And he taught three generations of one family. Oh. So granddad, dad, and grandson. Oh, which is really well, your family? Not my family, oh, no, no. any family. He was just telling me this. I thought that was, quite, that was quite cool to teach all three of them. What a story. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Is there anything else that grinds your gears? Me? Yeah. To With, add to Nathan's Oh annoyances. yeah, no, he's completely right. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Well, I think people, people, some people don't have the confidence. So they see a truck as they're coming onto the motorway and they're like, oh, and they back off it. So then they've lost 10, 20 miles an hour and then they're entering at like 40. Yeah. That's just not good. And then there's another truck and, oh. then, they're, and then they're in a, a world of hers. And then you're going sideways. Yeah. yeah. Rocks, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, same people are doing 40 in a 60 zone. National speed limit. That mm. is just so annoying. Is it a myth that you get points for going too slow? No, you can, if you're being obstructive. <clears throat> to be fair, I, I mean, the, the biggest thing I cannot stand are the 20 mile an hour zones. Oh, they are more dangerous than yeah. the 30 yeah. because people think you can step out in front of the car you can, and you can't. Mm. They're not safer. They are danger zones mm. and they're growing. They're spreading. <laughs> it's like a virus. <laughs> they're everywhere. Oh, oh my Lord. Bristol's, Bristol's got them. I can't stand them. It's just, it's do, not do right. Stick to, do you stick to the 20s? I stick to, I obey the law. <laughs> they are they are wrong. I mean, they obliterate your concentration. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I could go on. But I mean, the, Bristol also has the slowest dual carriageway in the country. There's a piece of 40 mile an hour dual carriageway. Oh, I think I, I think I was on that. I think I was doing 60. Has it got cameras on it? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Because I was doing 60 and I was like, oh, this is 40. Oh, yeah. what's that flash? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that fine? And there's yeah, a I'm great... going to expense. <laughs> yeah. And there'll be some, there'll be like 40 back to 60 it's, and then 40 again. And you can't make it up. It's just nuts. Yeah. You shouldn't have to keep staring at the speedo. You should be, yeah. you know, come on. Yeah, You're yeah, not dual yeah. carriage on a motorway. <laughs> Your black and white sign, let you go. Yeah, absolutely. Right, moving on. Um, ben, what's the name of the new dig? What? <laughs> what's that? What? what I thought it was you. No way. No, Come no. On. Oh, imagine me. Come on. Yeah. You like me. that? You it's like me. that, don't you? Yeah, it's me. Oh, no, no, because then my c career would already be over before it began. Physique wise, <laughs> Jack's got a bit more, I think. It could common. be me. It's not you. No, it's not me. No, You've got really could, could bad be Ethan. Form. But he didn't. It could drive. be Ethan. <laughs> could be you. I've had training. Yeah. I've had the training. From the stick. From the, yeah. I know. 
So it's only right that it is you. It's probably more than the current stick. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Right, shall we move on? <laughs> yeah, let's move on. All right. Uh, we've got another car story submitted by Paul and Ethan, take this one away. It's a quick one. <laughs> I did not write this, actually. It genuinely, genuinely says, dear Ethan and subordinates. <laughs> That's really harsh. Are you all right with that, Ben? <laughs> so I'm being called a subordinate. Clearly talking about you too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just listened to your last podcast and heard Gareth say that his insurance was affected after the DPD driver crashed into his car and it was classed as a claim. I can sadly top that. In November 2018, my van was broken into on my drive and £3,000 worth of tools were stolen. I called my van insurance to check if contents were covered and sadly they were not. I hung up the phone and thought, not, no, thought no more of it until my next renewal came. The cheeky bastards had registered my phone, phone call as a claim. So for the next five years, I have to disclose this on my policies, raising them on average £75 a year. Every year, it makes my piss boil having to disclose this to them <laughs> and makes me want to shit in the bag <laughs> and post it to the original insurance company for doing it. Keep up the good work. Really enjoy the podcast, Paul. Very nicely worded, Paul. Uh, very like well that. written, that one. Yeah. yeah. That sounds uh, deeply unfair. Is that legal? Uh, it is, yeah. yeah. So. No, I mean, not the bag. And, uh, <laughs> shag, the, I mean, yeah. Is that a claim? Yeah, well, a phone apparently call. so. So... Our friend Gareth, who is uh, on the podcast quite a lot as well, he, his M4 was backed into by DPD driver. Um, I think he got some money out of it, but his insurance has gone up by like a hundred quid or so. But that was an accident. But this one was a, just a phone call. Is that- oh, I see what you're saying. No, you yeah. phone in, you ask yeah. a question. Yeah. You haven't yeah. filled in a claim. You haven't filed a claim. Yeah. But it does seem a so, bit sneaky, doesn't it? Maybe, very sneaky. Yeah. Maybe you should, you should check that and contest it. Yeah. 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 Hasn't your insurance also gone up? Yeah, mine's gone up, yeah. And that wasn't your fault, like, yeah, no, screwed yeah. you up. It's just, it's Insurance like is a massive scam. It's such a kick in the teeth. Like this shitty thing happens to you, like your van gets broken into or whatever. Mm. And then and then another shitty mm. thing of having to pay more money for it. It's yep. not your fault. Maybe he didn't have a no tools a left in his vehicle sticker on. Oh, he should have got that pull. You could have spent like 30p. Yeah. yeah it's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you with insurance companies? Are they all right with you? When you say, oh yeah, it's Ben Collins here. They're like, nah, nah, nah mate. <laughs> I, I think I'm okay. I have a good relationship. Yeah. I try and keep that as well. Yeah. <laughs> phone them up every month. Yeah, I've done another one. Sorry. <laughs> done another no. radiator. <laughs> no, I'm pretty well behaved. And um, so I'm trying to, yeah, I've got no points. I'm a very I'm really? a good boy. Yeah, oh. I'm good. I suppose you can't you take say all that, your can aggression you? out on track and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah I do. Well, on on, to be fair, I take it out on <laughs> people I get hold of. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the, you know, it was like, for me, it's like a therapy session, Kerbera. It's like, yeah, uh, we're going to throw Ethan in. Yeah, yes. <laughs> get hold of you and uh, you know, turn you into mints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you recovered from that? I am, just about, yeah. That was, I've been telling everyone. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Just You've been end. giving away Ben's identity? No. As your instructor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I've spoiled the video for a lot oh, of people. But, uh, brilliant. Yeah. There goes all my instructing work then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Back uh, to Uber. Back to Uber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you actually daily drive? This is a good question for you. So I've got my Land Rover outside. Ooh. It's a, is it 98? Yeah, 1998 um, X Army. It's a Wolf spec, so it's been upgraded suspension and roll cage, that sort of stuff. I love it. It's it's awesome. It's a great bit of kit. I mean, it's just, um, it's canvas top, so it's very noisy. Mm. So I wear Bose um, noise cancelling earphones when I'm driving it. It just definitely. Are you uh, sponsored by Bose? I, no, I'm not yet. <laughs> I'd like to be. Sponsor him. He just gave you a free Please, shout Please, yeah, give me, give me some. They're really, but I, they're, they're great. And uh, uh, totally essential in the, in the 90 on the motorway. Otherwise it is miserable. And it's got no sound system. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to remember to turn the lights on. Otherwise there's no lights at all. There's no brake lights, oh, no wow. indicators, nothing. So you've got to turn a switch for that. Um, but it's got a map reading lights. So if you have a friend who, on these journeys who doesn't mind getting a, a bit wet if it rains, because the canvas isn't entirely oh, uh, rainproof. I need to check this out after. Yeah. It is, it's wicked. It's bench seats in the back. Very it's just cool. a yeah. great, bit, great bit of kit. And it's mega off-road. You know, you, it's hard to top that because it's so simple. You know, and you put it in diff lock, four-wheel drive, you know, you go anywhere. Excellent. Very, very cool. Love right. I think, I think that pretty much finishes up this, this podcast. We're it? there. Yeah. We've done a lot of talking. A big one. Yeah. yeah. That was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like that does now conclude uh, this week's Cars Rock Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed listening to 
us and learning more about Ben. And hopefully it's going to inspire you to email us your tales, unpopular opinions, and anything that you guys want to get off your chest. Email us, carstories at carthrottle.com. Ben, before we go, what have you got coming up? Good question. Um, so, well, a bit of filming coming up. So for the YouTubing, that's going to start that. Very, Fast very food, humble yeah. origins. You know, here we're going to, I'm going to literally first foray into this. It's quite terrifying. You guys, I mean, it's you've been doing it a long time now. So you're, you're very seasoned hands. Um, so for me, it's going to go and enjoy it, see how that goes. And um, yeah, just have some fun with it. And love to love to do some more filming with you boys. Because that's very fun. Cool, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm sure there's more stuff we could do. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. And then hopefully back into some movie making early next year, a bit of, bit of action, Jackson. Yeah. And see what, see what the new year brings. But, um, but the, you know, filming is back in business, which is, which is great. Very cool. Yeah. Right. Um, anyway, as for us, you can follow Ben on Instagram at Ben Colin Stig. I'm Otto Alex. I'm at Jack W. Joy. I'm at Ethan Smale. And you can follow Car Throttle at Car Throttle. Where can, where can they follow Car Throttle this week? Well, this uh, Wikipedia? Do we have a Wikipedia page? I don't know. Do we? Probably. Someone look it up. Follow Someone us on Wikipedia. One. Yeah. <laughs> and if there isn't a Wikipedia, then... Make one up. Yeah, yeah. make yeah. one up. Put I'm my... a racing driver. Yeah. Put my name at the top as company director. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do think you own Car Throttle, don't they? Yeah, I don't own Car Throttle. No. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I wouldn't be doing a shitty podcast with you, losers. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Ben and I oh, would be... Oh, I really in... enjoyed that one. Uh, <laughs> you and I would be in Monaco on a speedboat somewhere. <laughs> You know, little little bikini tops, just like, oh, would you like another serving yeah. of, of wine? No, don't get your get your mind out of the gutter. We're both seeing you in a mankini. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, where's well, this coming from? With that. Yeah. <laughs> but should we should we stop on this really hot and sexy yeah. number? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. What a way to finish. Yeah. <laughs> we hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Ben, for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Have bye a good bye. one. Bye bye. bye.